This is a production of Kapiolani Community College. Your toilet paper fails. She ever when you wipe your baby's bum. She ever when you make that fine BM. She ever when you feel that slip and dip. She ever wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Hi, welcome back to Shig Happens with me, Chef Henry Food Cop. Shig is short for Shigella. For all of you who haven't seen my first two shows, this is the third. Shigella is a bacteria that's found in human feces. And if you get shigellosis, it means that you somehow have eaten someone's feces. This is not good. So this show is all about the different things that you can do to keep from getting sick when you eat and to keep from getting other people sick when you cook. Now tonight's show is about buffets. All the things that you should know about buffets. Basically these are my rules. I've been in the industry for well over 30 years. I know what happens in the kitchen. I know how to eat at a buffet and not get sick. I want to show you how to do that. We start today's show again with emails. I've had so many questions about buffets that I thought I'd better do a whole show on buffets. And my first email comes from Jeff from the Big Island, who wrote to tell me that every time he has the seafood and cream sauce at his favorite Sunday brunch buffet, he experiences upset stomach and diarrhea soon after. What's up with that, he asks. Well, Jeff, I don't want to dish your favorite restaurant. But many operations will clean out the walk-in refrigerator to make their Sunday buffet items. They put a good sauce on it, and they've saved a lot of food cost by using up all of their leftovers. And you know, this is not a, you know, it's not a bad thing to do, but only if that food has not been time and temperature abused. Don't get me wrong, many restaurants don't even serve or save those leftovers for the buffet. They serve only fresh food. So how can you tell? A sure way to tell is if your stomach starts talking to you after eating the food. If something's been growing in food like staph, it can produce toxins. These are poisons which cannot be cooked out of the food. Symptoms such as projectile vomiting or explosive diarrhea can occur in as little as a half hour after eating the food. And if the food has been time and temperature abused, the pathogens may still be growing when you eat the food. This is not a good thing for your stomach. So Jeff, during today's show, I will cover my personal rules for eating at buffets. Here we are at Kapiolani Community College Cafeteria. No restaurants in their right mind would allow us to come in and film at their buffet restaurants. So we had to use our cafeteria here. And even though it's not your typical buffet, there are certainly some parts of it that are typical to many buffets. And you know, the rules apply no matter where you go and no matter what type of buffet you do. So normally what I do whenever I come into a buffet, you know, whether it's like at a wedding or some sort of party or even in a, uh, a featured buffet restaurant, is I will scan all of the items that are available for me. And uh, the reason I do this is because I really don't want to fill up my plate with things, with the filler things. I want to wait to the end where the really good stuff is. Okay, so here we are at the salad bar end of a buffet. And the whole idea around salad is that it should be cold. All of it should be cold. So I have some tips that I do, some things that I do to make sure that I'm getting the coldest salad. You'll see down here, here's a nice salad. If you look on the surface of this salad, it's 65 degrees. However, if you go down to the bottom and take the temperature, you can see because it's against the ice, it's 29 degrees. 
So you clearly want to pull from the bottom of the salads. You're going to get the coldest of the product there. The same thing holds true with salad dressings. So let's go down to the other end to the salad dressings and I'll show you how to keep the salad dressing cold or how a restaurant can keep the salad dressing really cold. Okay, so here we are at the salad dressings. Now this particular salad bar has their dressing set up in these crocks that stay in the freezer all night long. And then in the morning when they put the dressing in, they're in a frozen container, so it stays really cold. You can achieve the same effect by burying the uh, container in the crushed ice on the salad bar. But here, look at this, look at how this is. This salad dressing is 30 degrees. This is what you want, and especially on this one, this is a cream salad dressing. 30 degrees, that's, you couldn't ask for better. Diving Double Dipping Digit of Doom Award. Okay, so this week's Diving Double Dipping Digit of Doom Award actually goes to a group of people, and I've got two examples here. People who abuse the food on a buffet line. This first case, my wife Alice Ann was in a buffet line for a breakfast, and the guy in front of her actually fluffed the cereal with his fingers before dipping some out for his own portion. This is not acceptable. And then this other guy actually quadruple dipped the salad dressings, tasting each one as he went along. So there are many people out there that are doing this. You know who you are. Please stop doing this. It's not okay. Unless, of course, you want to keep receiving the diving, double dipping Digit of Doom Award. More next week. We'll be right back with news and commentary to chew after these important messages. Hello, hi, I'm Sam Choi. Did you know we have a world class culinary arts program right here in our own backyard? It's at the Culinary Institute of the Pacific at Kapilani, and it's got state-of-the-art facilities, hands-on instruction by top people in the field, workshop by visiting chefs, and lots of student-teacher interaction. Kapilani Culinary Arts Program, one of the world's best right here at home. For more information, call 734-9484. Chef Kusuma Kure's class, um, she has a content of cuisine, cooking, which is primarily your European, French, you know, the classical cuisines. So these are some of our more advanced students. They've gone through the fundamentals, they've gone through the intermediate, and now they're learning the, um, what we call the mother cuisine, which is basically French. Um, she has approximately about 20 students here. It's fairly crowded. And um, they learn everything from French cuisine, Italian. They go all the way through Europe and also into some of the American regional cuisines. They're probably going to learn more here than they're actually going to need when they get a job out there. But you know, at least they're exposed to many different types of cuisines. I would imagine that each step gets progressively harder for these guys where they really have to learn and build upon the class before it. Absolutely. What, what this class does is it reinforces the basic principles and processes of cookery. Um, basic saute, basic braising, uh, their classical sauces, their, their, their mother sauces. And what it does is actually gives them a very strong foundation so that when they go into the industry and they become chefs, they can tweak recipes or they can add their little nuances or creations to this classical cuisine and create this new global fusion, which of course is the newest type of cuisine out there.